Timmy Joe reviews anything. Reviewing computer parts on YouTube. That's Woo! You gotta be pumped on that, right, Will? Computer parts! Woo! Oh, yeah. What's going on guys? My name's Timmy Joe. I make videos about computers up here all over the internet and it's just going to be a lovely day today because we have a system and we have a nice old Haswell E, no, Broadwell E. Good name, Broadwell. It's hard to remember which one's which. H is last. Anyways, it's basically the high-end, super awesome platform uh, from Q3 2014, and uh, it isn't as revered uh, as its X79 or X58 counterparts because it doesn't support overclocking on Xeons. That's really sad because as we'll learn a little bit, there's a really nice 12-core processor you could put in one of these motherboards and get some extreme awesome performance. So. What kind of overclocks we get? What kind of base clock is it to begin with? Well, this little guy starts at 3.3 gigahertz and boosts up to 3.6, I believe. And I have it uh, on a, probably the worst motherboard you could probably get on X99, a uh, gigabyte affair, which we'll talk about in a little minute, uh, at 4.7 gigahertz, hooked up to this 280 mil deep cool rad, which is a pretty decent uh, affair. Uh, you know, I'm glad that it's over 4.5. That's, uh, you know, gigahertz, uh, or actually it's more than a gigahertz overclock over its base clock, which is really nice. So you, you're here, let's just skip right to the goods, the whole reason why you're here, then you can get out of here. We'll run little, little Cinebench and uh, talk about it. So I actually hooked this up to uh, my outside water cooling rig and not, not even outside, just to have the 360 mil rad and a proper pump and everything hooked up with a custom loop style, open loop. And uh, I can get this thing to 4.8 gigahertz, but even with this 280 mil rad, it's not happening. Uh, I can only get it to 4.7, but this motherboard I got, it doesn't have any LLC settings or anything. It's kind of, uh, you know, it only has four RAM slots, two on either side of the, uh, the processor. So what do we got? Uh, 1347. I was able to get a little bit higher when it was on water uh, at about 1360 or something like that. So, you know, nothing too, too special, but uh, it's a pretty cool platform. Six cores, 12 threads. You know, if you can get it on the cheap, like I thought I did, maybe it'd be a good idea, but it's not that good a deal at all. And I got a pretty damn good deal on this thing. So we'll talk about that in a second. So moving on, uh, there was three uh, Broadwell CPUs. There was two six cores and an eight core and the uh, six cores of uh, 5820K and then there was a 5930K and it had a little bit better base uh, and boost clock. But really why there was such a price difference, it was like there's a $200 price difference for a little bit of frequency you know, on stock. It was extra PCIe lanes, uh, you know, so if you, this thing only has 28 PCIe lanes, that, you know, Ryzen has more than that now, which we will be pinning this against the Ryzen 2600 and some benchmarks in just a second, and we'll see. Is it worth picking one of these up, or should you just go get a Ryzen? You know what, little hint, probably just get a Ryzen. Anyways, so yeah, uh, then there was a, an extra product stack that came out with uh, Broadwell, or Haswell, sorry, uh, and that actually brought the cores up to 10, and it was a little bit better IPC, uh, and, you know, a little bit, and it wasn't that much difference, uh, because you'd think it would be a lot better, because they shrunk the node from 28 nanometers down, or sorry, 22 nanometers down to uh, 14, so, and they're still on 14 now, but uh, from what I can tell, you know, if you have one of the 6,000 series processors it's not that much better it's not like Skylake uh, and that probably has to do with the ring bus architecture and all that stuff so yeah uh, you know just 22 nanometers that's right launched Q3 of 2014 and uh, had a suggested retail price of $400 essentially uh, you know nothing too crazy so uh, yeah I got this thing for $199 American uh, or you know uh, counting shipping and stuff it was actually a lot more than that uh, and uh, I thought that was a deal you know it ended up being uh, what 264 Canadian if you think about it uh, Ryzen 2600 is 240 bucks and you get a cooler 
and it has more PCIe lanes. It's not starting to look like too good a deal. And then I got all excited about this motherboard deal I found. I was like, oh, X99 motherboards are actually sort of cheap. Uh, I paid $129.99, so like 90 bucks for US for uh, uh, a motherboard that's got a shit VRM. It's got like a six phase VRM. It doesn't have any load line calibration settings in the motherboard. Like it's, it's got a M.2 slot and stuff. It's a half decent board, I think all X99 boards have to, have, you know, put to some level. But uh, in total, the cost of this system was, uh, let me see here, US, I uh, paid $339.73 uh, after shipping. So how does that compare to Ryzen 2600? Well, I just paid twenty or $236. So it was more than $100 difference. So it better make up for it in the benchmarks, right? Because Intel's always better. Spoiler alert, not, not so much. Not to mention, to get the full uh, bandwidth on your memory, you're going to need four RAM sticks uh, for this platform. So you're definitely going to have to I don't know, buy four DDR4 sticks if you want just 16 gigs of RAM. That's going to be a weird configuration. doesn't really you know, bode well for upgradability and stuff like that. This uh, well, this motherboard only has four RAM slots. Got some nice G skill in there right now. So uh, yeah, and then uh, there is a Xeon E5 uh, 2670 version three or 2680 version three 12 core processor that would be awesome to put in this. That upsets Cinnamon's score just at stock to about 1600 points. But again, you can't overclock, which severely limits your performance in games and stuff. So is that really going to be worth it? I, I, don't, I don't think so. So yeah, moving on. Let's talk a little bit about gaming uh, comparatively to Ryzen 2600. All right. So you think you want one of these things and you're willing to spend the premium to get the Intel experience and that high end platform, even though it's getting a little bit older. Well, you know, it's still it's DDR4 RAM and I have 3000 megahertz DDR3 RAM there. It's running fine, even though it says it only supports like up to 2666 or something silly. Uh, but, uh, you know, comparatively, like I said, you can save $100 going with Ryzen and get more stuff, more PCIe lanes. It's, you know, a newer platform. Uh, your motherboard is going to be supported for better processors if you want them you know stuff like that it's going to be a little bit easier but uh, I got a 19,393 with the Ryzen 2600 with a uh, graphics score of 25,000 and a physics score of 18,451 all right, and that's uh, using the Vega 64 with the exact same profile. I copied the Wattman over pro, uh, profile. A little bit of an overclock with the uh, fan blowing like a freaking uh, hair dryer. And uh, let's see how it stacks up against the uh, Broadwell E here. Worse. <laughs> A little bit worse, 19,393 versus 19,158. It's actually so damn similar. The physics score is about a thousand points off. I can't believe the Ryzen 1. I can't believe the Ryzen 1. Ryzen's gotten that good, and that's on a terrible Ryzen motherboard. Overclocked to only 4, 4 gigahertz or 4.05 gigahertz. Uh, that's where I've been ending up with this. So you can get a half decent motherboard, you know, maybe spend, you know, get, save 80 or, or $50 over this platform, get a really good motherboard and overclock it to 4.3 gigahertz possibly or 4.2 at least and get even that much better, more performance. So it's getting tromped on by Ryzen. I didn't think Ryzen was this far ahead, or not, not far ahead, but it really, they're not doing too bad considering the frequency is only 4 gigahertz. This is 700 megahertz faster. It's pretty interesting. Uh, you know, just, just kind of thinking about it. So, yeah, uh, the gaming benchmarks don't fare well for this thing. I actually like it, though. I've been using both systems pretty interchangeably. I kind of rather game on this system. It just seems like a little bit less headaches. I think that has a lot to do with the crappy motherboard I have on the uh, the Ryzen 2600, if you watched my last video. Not a big deal. So um, yeah, I think that pretty much sums up, uh, we can get right to some gaming benchmarks. So I'm just gonna talk over them because I like uh, to talk. So I have uh, the Vega, like I said, in both systems and we started off with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And um, I don't know what's up with that game, but it has really bad 1% lows. Uh, but the 5820K did come on top here uh, and it got a uh, average uh, of about eight more 
over the, uh, or sorry, seven more over the uh, Ryzen. So 83 average to 73, but the Ryzen actually had better 0.1% lows. So there was less stuttering on the Ryzen system with the same video card. Uh, Battlefield 5, the Ryzen uh, again lost just by a smidgen, had 118 uh, on the 5820K, but very similar performance. And we see here the 1% lows were actually worse on the Ryzen system with Vega on this uh, title. Uh, pretty, you know, uh, decent experience on both. You can definitely uh, get the most out of your, you know, more higher end graphics card with both of these platforms. Uh, you know, but you know, any more than a Vega 64, I think you're going to be leaving some performance on the table. Yeah, and then uh, Forza Horizon 4, we see another win, but by a very, very small margin for the 5820K, getting about a 5 uh, FPS average higher. And th that's interesting to me. I guess it's just because, you know, things are well optimized for Intel and Ryzen still needs some optimization or something like that. Games still like Intel processors, even when in synthetics, the Ryzen is clearly the better choice. It's kind of interesting to me, but uh, yeah, the Ryzen even had a really bad 1% low there of uh, 10, 10 there. That's, that's not good. So moving on to Apex Legends, and here we get Ryzen's first win. Win by a uh, half decent amount, where uh, the 5820K got a 120 uh, average frame rate and uh, actually a, a lower 1% low of 87 or 0.1% low. Uh, the Ryzen had a 35, a 135 average and uh, did fare out very, very well in this game, especially considering it's all online. So it's handling uh, very well, very, very well optimized game. I'm very much into that game and I can't wait to get this video edited so I can go play some more of it. Uh, and then we had Deus Ex Men kind of divided. And these last two, Vega just tanked. I don't know what it is about Vega, but the frequencies are all over the map. And it's very hard to use it as a benchmarking video card. Like if you have a 1080 or 1080 Ti, or even I got a 1070 for super cheap the other day, like I was actually considering just taking this out, even though Vega is the better card, will get better FPS on average than a 1070. I was considering taking it out because in some games that's not going to be true because the frequencies bounce all over the place with the Vega. I don't, I don't know, I'm, I'm starting to learn all its little quirks. And even if you set an overclock that it should maintain with the blower blowing like crazy and the frequencies are only, or the uh, temperatures are only 50 degrees, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're seeing this like fluctuation from 1600 megahertz down to a thousand a lot. And it's like, when I put, an NVIDIA GPU at uh, you know 2,000 megahertz, and it stays that it'll stay there. It won't throttle with the temperature. It's weird. So Deus Ex Mankind divided. The Ryzen got about three frames per second better, but had a worse 1% low, and that was just in the benchmark. And then uh, something's wrong with Vega and Crisis, but I wasn't doing too bad with Crisis on the 5820K. But when I loaded it on the Ryzen, I it, it just like cut the performance by a third. I just and I tried so many different troubleshooting measures, but uh, we see here the 5820 on the whole 5820K gets a little bit better gaming benchmarks than the Ryzen, but it's more expensive. It's the same old story. It's the same old Intel story. It's more expensive and it has less PCIe lanes, and uh, you know it's way older of a platform. It's actually got pretty bad power consumption compared to the Ryzen. Uh, I mean, Vega has pretty bad power consumption on the whole, but we see here uh, the uh, 5820K with an overclock of 4.7 gigahertz was using about 50 to 70 more watts than the Ryzen system was in the same, uh, like in Firestrike. So uh, it, the Ryzen system is actually, you know, it, it should be, it's 12 nanometer. Uh, you know, it's pretty more, you know, a little bit more efficient. Now that would change if I had a proper motherboard that could get the Ryzen up to 4.2 gigahertz. So I'm at Watch Jimmy Joe Instagram and Twitter. This has been a look back at uh, the old Broadwell E and seeing if it's a valid platform today. And I'm gonna say no, it's a much better idea to go with just a newer Intel, if that's what tickles your fancy, because uh, unless you want to get one of those old Xeons, I see you can get that 12 core Xeon for about 200 bucks. So that's pretty interesting proposition. I might do that next, just to see like how 12 cores on this thing would be pretty cool, even if the frequency is going to be a lot lower. But on the whole, Ryzen is such a better idea. It just doesn't make sense. And I think what I've learned most about this testing was that I shouldn't benchmark CPUs with Vega 64. And I, I won't be. I'm upcoming. Actually, might have a Vega Seven coming. Somebody, somebody's tickling me about it. Somebody. I'm gonna see if it actually happens. You know who you are.
We'll see. I'm at watching me do Instagram and Twitter. I uh, have a decent system. I'm gonna use it as my test bench for a little bit uh, for video cards, but in the end, it wasn't a good deal. It wasn't as good a deal as I thought it was. I got all giddy and excited about a $200 CPU and a $100 motherboard for, for X99 and thinking that, hey, it's finally a good deal. It's not. <laughs> it's much better to go with Ryzen. It's much better to go with, I don't know. You can get some pretty good quad core, like 4770K, you know, stuff like that uh, these days. And yeah, you're gonna miss out on a couple of cores, but you can probably clock those a little higher and the IPC is gonna be a little bit better on them. So yeah. I'm at what you can do on Instagram and Twitter. Thank you very much for watching. I have a Patreon. If you'd like to help donate to the channel, that helps this thing stay afloat here in this wacky world we live in. And I wanna thank you very much for uh, watching and I'm gonna get out of here. See ya!